Well, good morning, everyone. Um, we are really excited to see such a great group of folks here today from a lot of different walks of life. MARCO, the Mid-Atlantic Regional Council on the Ocean, is a partnership of five states, and we were formed in 2009, um, the five states you see here. And uh, our little motto is working to enhance vitality of the region's ocean ecosystem and economy, always trying to deal with both sides of that. And so these were the four priorities of MARCO. Uh, protecting the habitats, supporting offshore renewable energy, preparing for impacts of climate change, and promoting coastal water quality improvements. So um, those are, are sort of our, our guiding um, priorities that we keep an eye on. And what, um, as time went on, we realized those are really important aspects of ocean planning. And so as we um, uh, think about those four priorities, most all of them do fit into a larger sense of ocean planning. And so one of the first things we realized was that we have a lot of data, but it's in scattered places, and it's very difficult for anyone to figure out and understand the big picture. So the first thing we did was start our ocean data portal, and the web address is there. If you haven't been to the site, please go. Um, and uh, there's, there's just you know, so much information that's pulled together in one place now um, that really makes it much easier for us to understand. And then in 2010, we had the National Ocean Policy um, established under um, executive order, and that was what set up the notion of having regional planning bodies. And so in 2013, um, the regional planning body was formed in the Mid-Atlantic. And this is different from MARCO in that it includes the federal agencies, one more state, Pennsylvania, um, the Shinnecock Tribe, the Pamunkey Tribe, and the Mid-Atlantic Fisheries Management Council. So those are the entities that are tasked with developing um, a regional ocean action plan. And just to go back here, um, the, these are really what the RPB is supposed to do. So we're supposed to prepare for the future, for new and expanded uses in the Mid-Atlantic, make more informed decisions, and that's what we're talking about today, is developing the data so that we can make more informed decisions. Increase coordination across agencies, try to break down the stovepipes that exist and have us all working together um, uh, in, in, toward one goal. And engaging stakeholders to really get more people involved in ocean planning. I think it's hard for a lot of us. We're, we're very local. We think about our own backyard and the ocean's been a bit of an orphan out there. So this is a huge opportunity for us, especially us in the states who haven't had any um, real say beyond three miles um, to work with federal agencies. So that is what the RPB is working on. And so Marco, having preceded the RPB, is now really in a position of supporting the RPB. And again, we've, um, we've got the, our ocean data portal. We've started with this regional ocean assessment, and um, uh, the team that's up here now is going to talk to you about that in a minute. The um, marine animal data synthesis. When we started looking at all the layers on the portal, it was clear that it's too, there's so many, you can't really understand the big picture. So we, we've asked um, this very difficult task to be undertaken that you start to synthesize across um, species and taxa and um, so that we can see more clearly where are the, the really ecologically rich areas out there. And also with human uses. Uh, where, where's the intensity of human use? What are the areas that are most important that are helping to drive our ocean economy? And can we conden condense those layers into um, single or just a few maps so that we can really understand the big picture? And then the other things that Marco is doing, are, we have been involved with tribal engagement, working with all the tribes, both federally and state recognized, um, to make sure that we have their input into ocean planning. And all stakeholders, every industry, and, and I'm happy um, to see people from so many different industries here today. Stakeholder engagement is critical. Without everyone's support, um, we have a, a difficult time getting a plan that, that will go anywhere. So how are we going to use this data? Um, and I'm uh, especially focusing here now on the marine life and human use. So far, the Ocean Action Plan has these two goals of a healthy ocean ecosystem and sustainable human uses. And those are, are the two goals of the plan. 
Under healthy ocean ecosystems, one of the things that the RPB is considering is the identification of ecologically rich areas and region-wide features, as well as the areas of human use, so that we can go through a little process. And the process is simply that we, once we identify these areas, we set up teams of state, federal, tribal, stakeholders, um, scientists, to then do a more in-depth assessment of that area and uh, determine, is it in good shape? If it is, great, move on to the next area. If it's not, why not? Is something causing degradation in that area? If so, you know, what's the federal management agency there that has responsibility for that that could do something about it? And so this process would just end in a simple report, an in-depth assessment of each area. And that's where it would end for the RPB because the RPB does not have regulatory authority. So those reports would be made available to everyone and to be used as they will. So these are just real quickly the next steps that we're taking. Um, we are going to be putting out elements of the draft action plan um, on March 8th, so keep an eye out for that from the RPB and the website there. Uh, at the end of March, the RPB will be meeting in Baltimore to go over that and receive more public input. We are also planning um, a workshop with scientists to do some more vetting of the marine, marine life data analysis. <laughs> um, and then in June, there will be the public release of the Ocean Action Plan. And there will be a 45-day comment period for that. And then the RPB will meet again in September to finalize it, and then the plan will be submitted to the National Ocean Council for approval. And, um, and hopefully, all will go well. <laughs> So um, that's it for the quick brief overview.